show me. Uh, this is not vodka. This is this is, this is water. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> wow. First of all, I want to thank uh, Ken Agard, uh, the committee, and the voters for this wonderful honor. Anyone who knows me knows how. I was humbled and thrilled to be inducted into this Hall of Fame, especially along this great class that I'm going in with. They also know that the only thing I dread more than public speaking <laughs> is speaking in public. <laughs> so, so, of course, my worst nightmare <laughs> tonight was to either follow the great Mike Emmerich or my very good friend, the general himself, Bob Lee. So this comes out, and who am I following? Bob Lee. <laughs> so, um, that said, I am very, very excited that I've been given this opportunity to express my gratitude for all the opportunities I was given, and to say thank you to all the people at ESPN and at ABC Sports that I was so fortunate to work for, to work with, and who helped me throughout my career. I want to apologize now. You're going to hear a lot of names. Let me start with how my career was dramatically impacted by some of the giants of this business. In 1978, when I was first trying to get into sports television, it was Hall of Famer Mike Weissman who hired me as a runner. Over the next two years, as I desperately tried to get hired anywhere, any place, Mike was always there to encourage me to mentor me, and to help me stay focused on getting into the business. Thanks, Mike. I don't know if he's here tonight. The only other thing he could have done better for me, he could have hired me. <laughs> so, in 1980, it was Hall of Famers Chet Simmons and Scotty Connell who did hire me at ESPN. Thanks to both of them, getting that PA job working nights in Sports Center was the most significant break in my professional life. It allowed me the opportunity to be part of ESPN's explosive growth and tremendous success over the next 35 years of my career. Now, get this. From 1981 until 2001, for 20 straight years, from the time I was a PA to eventually becoming an executive vice president, I only worked for and reported to five men. All five of those men are in the Hall of Fame. It's <laughs> it started with Hall of Famer, uh, the remarkable Bill Fitz. He and Ellen Beckwith hired me as a PA in ESPN's remote production department. Bill taught me, he challenged me, he supported me, and helped me believe I might actually make it in this business. Thanks for everything, Bill. From Bill, I then reported to Hall of Famer and legend Steve Bornstein. You talk about being challenged. If you, if you work for Steve, trust me, you're going to be challenged. I owe Steve a lot. Steve was the man who gave me my first management opportunities that truly jump-started my career. Once Steve had enough of me, and he eventually had enough of me, he gave me the chance to report directly to Hall of Famer, the amazing John Walsh. John has been my friend, my great friend, mentor, and confidant since the day we met. Those four years in the early 90s, working for John and working in the Sports Center newsroom was, were maybe the highlights of my career. Next, Hall of Famer and another important mentor, the great Howard Katz. <laughs> Howard gave me the opportunity to work directly for him and to run ESPN's remote production department. I learned a tremendous amount from Howard. He, he was a great boss, but he's, a, he's been even a better friend. 
Two years later, Steve Bornstein, who was then president of both ESPN and ABC Sports, asked me to oversee production at ABC, once again reporting directly to him. Steve gave me another great opportunity, and because of him, I feel so grateful that I was able to work with the outstanding people of ABC Sports, including the privilege of working with one of tonight's inductees, the wonderful Doug Wilson. <clears throat> I actually reported briefly to Howard again when he asked me to return to ESPN and oversee production. Another amazing opportunity. When Howard moved on to become president of ABC Sports, I was so very fortunate to then report directly to Hall of Famer, industry giant, and amazing person, George Bodenheimer. I reported directly... <laughs> I reported directly to George for four years. It doesn't get any better than that. So think about it. For essentially the first 20 years of my career, I reported directly to and learned directly from five of the most outstanding executives in sports television history. Each one was an incredible leader and visionary in their own right. But each had their own unique strengths, talent, and style. I'm so grateful and so lucky. I would not be standing here if it wasn't for any one of you. Throughout my career, I was fortunate to work closely with many other Hall of Famers, Jeff Mason, Chuck Pagano, Chris Berman, Robin Roberts, Dick Vitale, Bill Raftery, Bob Dixon, and now Bob Lee and Doug Wilson. I saw, I saw firsthand why each and every one of them is in the Hall of Fame. The speaking of Hall of Famers, I was incredibly lucky to have four Hall of Fame caliber executive assistants over the past 25 years. Diane Dillon, Joel Geller, Denise Pellegrini, and of course the incomparable Janice Baker. Thank you all for everything. <clears throat> I was on the production side for most of my career and worked with sensational talent people at both ESPN and ABC Sports. And I'm gonna take the chance here to name a few. I know I'm gonna miss somebody. But I want to mention Jay Drake, John Wildhack, Fred Gudelli, Mo Davenport, Tony Tortorisi, Rick Barry, Norby Williamson, Jim Allegro, John Skipper, and Chip Dean. Chip and I were a producer-director team back, way back in the 80s. As the video pointed out, we did get a chance to produce that St. John's Georgetown game, produce and direct it. But Chip was instrumental in showing me, through his example, the importance of setting very, very high standards and then working extremely hard to make yourself, your team, and your shows better every day. Thanks, Chip. In my later years at ESPN, I was very proud to oversee the many departments and the thousands of professional, hardworking, and creative people that so-called pr support production and who really get the recognition they deserve. The ESPN Operations Department, Creative Services, Stats and Information, the LA Production Facility, the News Gathering Department, and the Talent Office. I especially want to thank six very special people who were the leaders of those departments. They were without question some of the best and most talented executives I ever had the pleasure of working with. Jody Markley, Bob Toms, Judy Cordray, Edmundo Macedo, Vince Doria, and Laurie Orlando. I feel so fortunate to have worked closely with each and every one of you. Many of them are here tonight. Thank you all. You made my job very easy those last few years. I'm going to take a sip of this water. I need to take a moment to acknowledge my late parents, my mom, Maureen, and my dad, Dave. They were wonderful role models and incredibly supportive throughout, their, th throughout my life and career. Both of them would have really enjoyed tonight. My, my sister, Jean Marie, my brother, Mark, my sister-in-law, Mary, my other sister-in-law, Jerry, are here tonight. When I told my family that I was elected into this Hall of Fame, my brother did not miss a beat. Wow, that's great, he said. Now you and dad are in a combined 20 Hall of Fames. You know where this is going. He's in 19 and you're in one. <laughs> so, thanks, thanks, Mark. 
Um, my son Matt and my daughter Chrissy are also here tonight. I'm very proud of both of them. I want to thank them for being such wonderful, supportive kids. However, I don't want to hear from either of you any critique about this speech tonight, okay? <laughs> so. I wish my daughter, Loshima, and my grandson, Atlas, could have been here tonight, but I wanted to spare everyone from having a three-year-old running around the Hilton. I don't think that would have been a good idea. Finally, I want to thank uh, my beautiful wife, Ro. She has put up with me for almost 42 years. Ro has been by my side and on my side since the day we married when I was an unemployed assistant basketball coach. Trust me, her, her father wasn't really sure about that whole, <laughs> that whole thing. <laughs> she then agreed to make the trek up to Bristol, Connecticut so I could work for this little unknown cable sports network and then stayed with me despite the long hours, the travel, and the ups and downs that this business demands. Rosie, you know I couldn't have done this without you. Thanks for everything. I love you, babe. <laughs> and, and, and thanks for indulging me.